International Child Protection Network of Canada is pleased to host Save the Children uh, Bolivia, World Vision India, and World Vision Indonesia uh, to share the experiences uh, of localization of child protection interventions during the COVID-19. In the upcoming annual meeting of the Alliance of Child Protection in Humanitarian Action, we will start with um, Tabita from World Vision India to share their experiences uh, during the COVID 19. Please go ahead, Tabita. Thank you, Maris. Uh, during COVID pandemic, World Vision has uh, worked with uh, various partnerships for child protection. It is both government and community level. As I do share about the, these partnerships during COVID-19 situation, I would like to take you through uh, the situation prior to the uh, COVID-19, the partnerships that were existing uh, um, prior to COVID. The local level partnerships that were there prior to COVID were government and community level. At the government level, uh, we had uh, district child protection units. With these units, uh, World Vision had implementation plan so that the child protection programming can happen effectively in the communities. A regular child protection review meetings were being conducted uh, to address the sectoral issues and also interface meetings being organized with the communities as the child protection in, in, in the communities, uh, the issues have been identified. Along with child protection uh, units, World Vision India at the various operational areas worked with the district child protection units in the rescue operations to rescue the children who are in labor and were given to the child marriage. World Vision also conducted various capacity building programs to the staff and the CPU members. CPU means child protection units. At the community level, uh, World Vision have worked with community-based organization in which child protection units are also part of it. Around 2000 child protection units across India have been established by World Vision India. And World Vision also have worked with the faith-based organization to provide awareness on the implication of child marriages to the parents and the community leaders in the communities. And also World Vision worked with women groups, which are self-help groups, and also the local NGOs to bring the awareness programs in the communities. During the COVID, the partnerships that World Vision had are with government, World Vision has been made as a nodal agency to plan the prevention programs in the community and also prepare the strategy to respond to the child protection issues. And also World Vision India has been made part of the vigilance committee to identify the child protection issues in the communities. Child line, child helpline is one of the a uh, helpline which has been a great support to uh, report the issues in timely and respond to the child protection issues. In the communities, along with um, the child line, community-based organizations have effectively worked through to address the child protection issues. And also local non-government organizations have played a vital role to identify and respond to the uh, child protection issues along with World Vision India. Let us uh, see what is the key role these partnerships have played in the communities. At the government level, uh, there is an Anganwadi worker who works in the community. Uh, basically, these workers are very close to the families who has helped to respond the situation by listing the children details and also uh, there was a timely response with a partnership with child marriage Prohib prohibition officer child welfare committees and the child line and also uh, could able to provide timely counseling to the children who were 
found to be depressed and also could able to sort permissions to provide IEC, which is uh, information, education and communication to the uh, parents and the children in the communities and also the community leaders and also could able to organize virtual review meetings to uh, understand the gaps while responding to the child protection issues and also to update what is the status of the child protection in a given community. At the community level, child protection units played key part in identifying and addressing the child protection issues and also could able to provide child protection messages to the parents, children and other people in the community through mobile devices and the PA system which are available in the community centers and also the religious establishments and also could able to do the child monitoring to through volunteer support. Um, key achievements through partnerships in the period of uh, this lockdown that is from March to August World Vision could able to identify the child protection incidents and provide the timely support and also could able to provide timely psychosocial support uh, through counseling and could able to successfully uh, give the messaging child protection messaging to the uh, parents and the children and could able to avoid many possible cases of child abuse. Through this effort, World Vision India could able to stop 28 child marriages and also could able to ensure the timely reporting of child sexual abuse, which is about nine cases and also uh, could able to identify the suicide suicides of uh, children, which has accounted as eight and timely could able to arrange the counseling facility to the children. Through this partnership, so counseling that was provided was to 45,314 children and the messaging was given to 99,668 children. And through the, uh, this messaging, we could able to reach 7,250 parents. So key achievement in this uh, uh, pandemic was the volunteer engagement. The volunteer engagement through the children groups. Volunteers have worked along with the children groups and ensure the child monitoring and also ensure that children activities are being conducted so that children are properly effectively engaged for their continuous learning. Thank you, Tabitha. And uh, now over to uh, Bianca Chandra, CP Specialist from World Vision Indonesia. Local partnership with government and community actors has an important role in child protection action in Indonesia. It is almost impossible to engage on sensitive issues without the partnership. It is also important to capitalize on strong and equitable local partnership during the preparedness phase to facilitate a successful and more coordinated response and recovery. In pandemic COVID-19, Wahana Visi Indonesia, through collaboration with Ministry of Women Empowerment and Child Protection, developed guidelines of community-based child protection in pandemic COVID-19. The objective of this guideline is to provide a competence for cadres or volunteers in community level to do child protection action during pandemic. Guideline of community-based child protection in pandemic COVID-19 launched by Ministry of Women Empowerment and Child Protection in national level. We facilitate online training of trainers for local facilitators in province, district, city, and village level. Province and district facilitate village governments to implement this guideline. We also realize that children's voice are important to be heard so that their, their needs, rights, and protection are fulfilled. Before, adults and the government were initially busy for COVID response, but none involved children. Wahana Visi Indonesia 
facilitate listening to children's voice through child voice online survey, child research, children's center to president to accommodate children's voice that live in the remote underdeveloped area. And also with joining forces, facilitate child led campaign as a partner to develop children capacity to advocate child issue during pandemic, such as child labor, child marriage, and challenge on study from home. The children hearing and give recommendation to the Ministry of Women Empowerment and Child Protection in national level, Indonesian Commission for Children Protection, and also Presidential Staff Office. Now, ministries, agencies in national and local current meetings are more involved and considered children's voice in making decisions and policies. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Bianca. And uh, now over to Kate from Save the Children to present the work they are doing in Bolivia. Hi, everyone. Bolivia recorded its first two cases of COVID uh, on March 10th, 2020. Since that time, we've been uh, concerned about the effects on children in Bolivia for a number of reasons. One of the big concerns has been that it was announced in August that schools would stay closed uh, for the upcoming year, although due to pressure from NGOs and others, uh, it looks like the, the encouragement of virtual learning will continue. I want to quickly mention three different uh, work we've done on child protection during this time uh, in order to support children and youth in Bolivia. First of all, our protection project, Constructing Safe Environments for Children, has socialized audio, visual material and radio messages for the prevention of sexual violence against children and non-violent parenting messages to our municipal partners. Uh, these are being disseminated through social media channels and by local TV and radio. Secondly, our project team launched a social media and radio survey to get first-hand opinions from children, adolescents, and their parents about alternatives for distance learning. Based on these survey results, a toolbox for training on the prevention of sexual violence against children under COVID will be developed. And third, our Adolescent Sexual Reproductive Health Rates Project is developing friendly messages for audiovisual material to prevent adolescent pregnancy, access to sexual reproductive health, and prevention of violence. We are actually developing a radio drama for adolescents focused on those three themes uh, with a reflection after each chapter through radio channels and social media in the communities where the project is being implemented. Thank you. Great, thanks a lot, Kate, and uh, thanks to all the speakers. And we're really looking forward to presenting more of the work being done during the meeting in October.